Hello my dear audience, today I'm presenting you three amazing yet fairly affordable CPU coolers, air coolers to be exact, which on top of that are capable of offering quite surprising cooling performance given their size. I was pleasantly surprised. So there's something here for every one of us. We are talking of the fairly recent Enermax ETS F40 FS series. As for the naming, it surely could have been improved, but whatever, let's move on. This series consists of three different versions, or maybe even four if you count the white version. In today's review we'll be looking at the standard version, or as how Enermax tends to call it, Silent Edition, the solid black variant, and last but not least, the priciest out of the three, namely the version featuring ARGB lighting. The bare and rather unspectacular basic version currently goes for like 40 US dollars, the matte black version is 47 dollars, and for the ARGB lit one you'd be shelling out about 52 dollars. Right off the bat let me point out that you do not have to expect any kind of performance difference between these three coolers. Even in terms of noise levels there won't be any difference. And that's a good thing, at the end of the day we the consumers are given the choice of what's more important to us. If we cared mostly about price to performance ratio, we surely would pick the basic version, the silent edition. All that matters is performance, looks, aesthetics are secondary or maybe completely unimportant. If you're one of those people that like to spend a few bucks more and want something sleek without going down the RGB route, your best choice might be the solid black variant. And finally, if you're into all that bling bling and want something to help you light up your PC a little, no questions asked, you reach for the ARGB version. And this is where we additionally have the choice between a matte black or white heatsink. Very well, that's nice and all, but what is the ETS F40 FS series actually capable of? I've mentioned a pleasant surprise earlier before, we'll certainly get back to that. As for what comes included, all three coolers expectedly come with pretty much identical stuff. Well, except for the fact the ARGB version comes with an illuminated fan. Those LEDs are controlled via the standard 5 volt 3 pin ARGB connector. The heatsink cap happens to come with a little bit of lighting too, therefore features a tiny proprietary connector that plugs into the fan. With all three versions, there's the same high quality mounting stuff out of metal included, along with a small tube of thermal paste respectively. Noteworthy or rather praiseworthy is the fact, with each of these coolers there's an additional pair of fan brackets included, so if we decided to upgrade and attach another fan in the future to get even more cooling performance out of this thing, we can do that quite easily. Understandably, yet somewhat disappointing to me is that the ARGB version does not actually come with a controller to take care of the lighting. On the other hand, the majority of decent motherboards out there already comes equipped with necessary ARGB headers. So let's take a closer look at the heatsinks. The only difference between the solid black and ARGB variant being the lighting aspect. Everything else remains identical, both are matte black and are equipped with that same heatsink cap on the top. Essentially, the cheapest version, the Silent Edition, is the same exact cooler but massively slimmed down in terms of aesthetics, cosmetics. Obviously, no black paint job or coating going on here and there's no longer a cap on top of its heatsink. This also leads to this model being slightly shorter with 156mm as opposed to the other two variants coming in 2mm taller. Although we are only talking of cosmetic height here, as said the heatsink is the same one. Despite fairly attractive pricing, the build quality seems impressive. Even those 140mm fans come with rubber pads to help minimize vibration noise. Enermax has implemented the so-called VGF technology here, vortex generator flow. For short, small spoilers on the fins next to the heat pipes create a vortex which supposedly brings in more fresh air to the back of the heat pipes. By now you've surely noticed the now fairly common asymmetric heat pipe design. This not only creates additional space for the fan, but also serves the purpose of allowing for high profile memory modules to exist near the CPU cooler without any clearance issues, all RAM slots remaining uncovered. I can totally confirm that. 
Aside from that, we are looking at a direct touch base sporting a total of four heat pipes with a diameter of six millimeters respectively. Nothing really out of the ordinary here though. Supported are all the recent Intel and AMD CPU sockets. On paper at least, it seems as though we are dealing with fine fans on these coolers. In fact, I'll tell you right away, all three of those perform identically and produce the exact same noise level, which under normal circumstances is remarkably low, very quiet indeed. Only once we allow the fans to crank up to their max RPM, then we are talking of audible, although I personally would not consider going with the term loud. As for the installation process, all is extremely simple. In just a few steps and minutes, everything is set up and the cooler is successfully resting on top of the CPU as it should be. I want to take time to praise Enermax for going with all metal mounting brackets here. Not a single piece of plastic here. Well, except for those standoffs, which by all means better not be metal. According to Enermax, such an ETS F40FS cooler should be capable of dealing with a TDP of up to 200 watts. But what's behind that? How well do these three coolers fare against those mighty air cooling legends Noctua and HD15 or Deepcool Assassin 3 to name two? My usual test CP for that, as always, is the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X featuring 8 cores and 16 threads running at stock settings. We should not underestimate the amount of heat that CPU is capable of producing. Now here are my test results. Now it should be pretty clear to you what I meant with pleasant surprise in the beginning of the video. Despite the fairly small compact size of such an ETS F40 FS cooler, in some way it can actually put up a nice fight against those legendary more expensive giants. Ok sure, no doubt, those AIO liquid coolers as well as high end air coolers offer measurably more performance, but what shouldn't be left out of the picture is the price. The only exception may or may not be the Scythe Mugen 5 ARGB Plus that I've included in my charts. It's priced higher than today's Enermax ARGB air cooler, but does manage to threaten the Enermax model slightly when bringing price to performance ratio into the picture. But then again, that Scythe cooler would set you back like $70 to $80. So not necessarily direct competition for today's three compact cooling solutions by Enermax. Now when not going crazy with extreme AVX loads, such as in IDA64, we are in fact talking of only a few degrees Celsius difference between the ETS F40FS and more powerful air coolers. A very very respectable result indeed, in my opinion, especially given the fact there's only a single 140mm fan attached to such an Enermax tower out of the box. The noise levels with 300 to 1200 RPM, as is to be expected, turn out to be pretty darn good. So those of you that are on the hunt for a well performing compact air cooler without unnecessary bells and whistles, the basic version of the ETS F40 FS will serve you incredibly well. By paying more, you're only opening doors for quote unquote better looks. For me personally, this solid black version appears to be the sweet spot. I would most likely pick that one. Well, probably because I like sleek aesthetics. And at $47 or 39 euros over here in Europe, there's not really much you can do wrong. Not really surprising though, is that the ARGB variant does burst out of the three models when it comes down to value, price to performance ratio. 43 euros or $52 for a decent air cooler isn't exactly a low amount of money. There are some pretty strong alternatives in the market, but then again, for the most part, lacking ARGB lighting and generally with slightly worse build quality from my experience. The bottom line is, in my book, the ETS F40 FS series by Enermax has succeeded and is well worth recommending. As always, thanks a lot for watching and for commenting. Make sure to take care of yourselves.